chimps. Today, we are once again revisiting Drama Mountain. You see, a couple of weeks ago, I put together a very, very large video, which was called Drama Mama Illuminati. Yeah, it's, that, it's a really simple name, I know. Uh, I do a series every once in a while called Drama Mama, which is when I think a drama has raised to a level of importance that it's worthy of spending a lot of time talking about, I will basically spend a bunch of time getting all of the receipts in order so that I can go from beginning to end with my viewers, explain all of the evidence that we have, and then at the end, after we've looked through all of the evidence, come to a conclusion. Sometimes dramas are so big and so messy that they extend into additional videos. And that is the case in this particular circumstance. You see, the Illuminati drama has uh, been roiling for a very long time now, and it just seems to keep getting worse. I'm going to do a very quick summary here. Um, but I highly recommend that you go and actually watch my original Drama Mama Illuminati video. It's really simple. Just type in on YouTube, Drama Mama Illuminati, and you'll find my video on my channel, Demon Mama. Um, it's a long hike, but if you're familiar with the content creator, or even if you're not, I assure you it's worth your time. Uh, uh, it's a pretty messy uh, situation that that a lot of people have received incorrect information on because of the nature of the situation. The basic summary is a content creator uh, by the name of Illuminati who makes videos exposing frauds, basically. Uh, Illuminati's videos discuss uh, corporations that have behaved poorly, multi-level marketing uh, companies slash scams, act just straight up scams, cults, all kinds of manipulative practices. That is the sort of focus of Illuminati's channel. Um, and Illuminati uh, has been very credibly accused of engaging in corporate uh, and financial manipulation of her own uh, to a degree that has spun now into a horrible nightmare mess for a ton of people. Uh, in addition to her attempting to take financial control over a very young YouTuber, uh, an, a very young YouTuber's life, she also uh, has made a habit of going out of her way to damage the reputations of her former co-workers who no longer work on projects with her. Uh, projects that did not end um, poorly, but where people decided to go their own ways for, for, uh, for creative reasons, she went out of her way to damage the reputations and careers of those people. That's the quick summary. Um, Illuminati has basically been shown by a significant amount of evidence to engage in repeat abusive behavior, uh, false severe false allegations against uh, people that she wishes to control, and also to attempt to use uh, financial control over other people to her own benefit. Which brings us to today. Uh, today, there are three things that we are going to be reacting to and talking about. Uh, the first is a very simple tweet from Wonderstruck. Uh, who is one of the people involved in this situation. The second is a video from a third former collaborator uh, of, uh, of Blair from Illuminati. Blair is the name of the person who runs the Illuminati channel for those who are coming in just today. Um, there has been a third video that has dropped. Now, uh, uh, for those who have been watching all along, you guys will know that the, the there has been two former co-workers who have come forward with very serious and very structured allegations um, about Blair's behavior, behavior, and now a third has come along. We're going to be watching that video. And then finally, we are going to be reacting to another tweet uh, from uh, Blair's former very, very close friend or perhaps partner, uh, somebody who was uh, uh, by, goes by the name of Oz Media. Oz Media was directly involved in basically all aspects of this, uh, of the campaign of harassment against the former employees. This has gotten very, very, uh, uh, stressful. Um, and also 
a lot of people have been hurt in this process. So without further ado, let us take a look at our first piece for today, okay? This is the YouTube, the official YouTube of Wonderstruck. Uh, uh, hi, I'm Wonder. Uh, we watched Wonder's video in my previous thing. If you want the full context, please go. Wonder published a video with an enormous amount of uh, information, claims, allegations, and evidence about how uh, they were treated by Illuminati. Uh, Blair, a.k.a. Illuminati, just sent me a cease and desist for speaking out against her abuse. I will not be silenced. And actually, you can see down here the Humanist Report, who I quite like a lot, um, who was formerly, until very recently, a collaborator with uh, Illuminati. Uh, the Humanist Report was previously, until very recently, on a podcast called Leftist Mafia. The podcast still exists, but the podcast decided to fire Blair from the podcast after all of this shit came out. Uh, so... Some of you will remember during my uh, last video that I predicted uh, that Blair's path of action was going to be to target Wonder. And the reason why I predicted this is because Wonder was in the most vulnerable position. This has, of course, now been proven to be accurate. That uh, Blair is now sending a legal cease and desists for a YouTube video, which is a very interesting thing to do. Um, for those who don't know what a cease and desist is, a cease and desist is, it doesn't actually really do anything. Um, but what it does is it sets, it begins a paper trail. A cease and desist is a warning shot. It's a legal warning shot. So what you do when you have a cease and desist is you have a lawyer draft up a cease and desist letter. And that letter t very clearly in as legal terms as possible outlines the behavior that you believe is harming you, why it needs to stop, and, and formally asks the person uh, to stop that behavior. This is uh, going to be... Uh, very heavily documented, the date, etc., etc. It's going to be, uh, sometimes it will be sent, um, like, with a signed delivery so that there is uh, evidence that you did receive the letter. Um, a cease and desist is basically going, we told you to stop, and that's a line in the sand. But it doesn't actually, it can't be really enforced in any way. A cease and desist doesn't actually mean, like, the cops can't tell you to, like, stop doing something because of a cease and desist. You're not actually in trouble when you get a cease and desist. It's just a warning shot. And it's usually used uh, to, uh, to stop a conflict before it gets any worse. There are some very reasonable reasons to issue a cease and desist. For example... Let me give you a, a good reason for a cease and desist. Um, let's say you have a neighbor who every single night fires fireworks at 8.30 p.m. and you have to work at 6 a.m. the next day. And every single night your neighbor is blasting fireworks off and it's technically legal for them to fire those fireworks. Uh, or maybe they might be stepping on some kind of... Of, of rule, but it's not like the police can't get involved. And they and you go over to them in person and you say, hey, can you stop firing fireworks? And they go, fuck you, loser, shut up. And then they keep firing fireworks at 8.30 p.m. You could have your lawyer issue a cease and desist with the goal of ultimately building a case that they are disrupting your life, that they're damaging your property, that you're damaging your mental health or whatever. That's a, a fairly above-the-board use of a cease and desist. Unfortunately, cease and desists are often used as intimidation. So, for example, uh, cease and desists are sometimes uh, issued by corporations uh, to threaten people into behavior that they don't like. Many a person has received a cease and desist from Nintendo for doing something that they don't approve of, uh, downloading an emulation or something along those lines, which uh, may or may not be legal or may or may not be illegal, 
but nonetheless, the corporation might want to stop you from doing it. So they might issue a cease and desist on the hope that you will be intimidated into stopping. Um, and in this case, I can't help but feel that that is exactly what this is. Keep in mind that we went through Wonder's original thread here on my show live, and Wonder did not make any slanderous allegations whatsoever uh, in the initial thread um, that Wonder published, at least to my knowledge. Uh, we That th initial thread that Wonder published was fairly tame. Most of the allegations were, were uh, interpersonal. It was Wonder saying, I had a really bad experience with Blair. I don't think that you should trust that uh, her allegations against other people because I don't think she's an honest person, which is not illegal. Um, and then Blair responded with a video in which Blair made a lot of very severe allegations against Wonder and also divulged extremely personal and private and potentially damaging information via an enormous YouTube platform. Wonder then made the choice to respond via video. And Blair believes that it is it is worthy of issuing a cease and desist because Wonder chose to respond to the video that Blair made making a bunch of allegations. This is, in my opinion, a clear-cut example of somebody trying to use a cease and desist to intimidate. And what's worse... I also think that it might be an indication that Illuminati Blair wants to use uh, further legal action against Wonder. You see, like I said before, a cease and desist is nothing in and of itself. It doesn't do anything. However, it can, it serves those two purposes, intimidation and secondly, a legal record that you ask somebody to stop doing something. Now, when we went through Wonder's video, um, I, re I said a couple of times that there was a lot of stuff that I think that Wonder um, was possibly, uh, could possibly get in trouble for. Not because they were some kind of, um, you know, uh, ridiculous allegation or slanderous allegation, but instead because they might be in violation of a contract. Unfortunately, in America, contracts have an unbelievable amount of power. Now, not all contracts are fully legal, and there are contracts that can be determined as invalid. Um, that's happened before. But a lot of contracts do hold up in court, um, even some of the most ridiculous things you can imagine. And it is possible that Wonder, at some point during his long employment with Illuminati, um did sign a paper that said that he couldn't say anything mean about Illuminati. Unfortunately, this cease and desist uh, could be the first sign of an indication to pursue further legal action against Wonderstruck, which would be very, very unfortunate. Now, one thing I want to be clear on is thankfully... Wonderstruck has decided to prepare a legal fund. Here is another tweet from Wonder. Hey everyone, I hope that you're well. As many of you know by now, during this ongoing situation, I received a cease and desist demanding that I remove my voice. Today, I have started a GoFundMe for anyone who wishes to aid legally in this matter that I intend to fight. Uh, and down here below, any funds received will be sent directly to my for, for my retainer for legal fees. Any remainder will be donated to a charity known as the Trevor Project, a charity designed to help LGBTQ youth in a multitude of ways. You can read more here. Receipts will be included to sh uh, as to show transparency with where, where all of the funds are going. Thank you for taking the time to read. Even just your thoughts are more support than I could ever ask for. Stay safe, be well, and take care. Um, and as we can look here, thankfully, uh, Wonder 
was able to raise seventeen thousand uh, dollars uh, for this legal fund, which is way more than enough. So Wonder is absolutely going to be uh, uh, going to have the legal representation that he needs, um, which is great to hear. Really, really, really good good news. Uh, if anybody feels the need to, to further support, I am going to link the, the GoFundMe here. Here's the GoFundMe if you feel like it. Just keep in mind, it did already reach funding. So don't feel like super pressured. If you don't want to throw more money, you can also just choose to donate to the Trevor Project, which would be totally valid. I do believe, I'm not a lawyer, but $17,000 is a, is, a, is a solid amount of money for legal defense. Um... It is possible that it goes beyond that, that it becomes more messy, but we don't have that information right now. So again, they seem to be doing okay, and that's a good thing. I just wanted to make sure you can donate if you'd like to, but I wanted to make sure everybody knew it already got funded. It got funded like within the first day. It was like right on, right onto it. Uh, we don't know how much this will cost. It, 1,000 was only a placeholder value. Yes, I igno I just said that. I understand that nobody knows how much a lawsuit will cost, but seventeen. Th I'm just saying, seventeen thousand dollars is a very good uh, uh, sum of money to prepare for this type of lawsuit. Okay, there you go. Just just want you guys to understand. Okay, please. Thank you. Um, now, uh, it's very good to me and it's very encouraging to me that a lot of support has come to Wonder. Keep in mind uh, that Wonder was severely outnumbered and outpowered in this particular situation. Wonder's channel is significantly smaller by a long shot than, uh, than Illuminati. Uh, Wonder's Twitter account is a fraction of the size of Illuminati's Twitter account. Um, Wonder, Wonder's video did not even get close to as many views as as Blair's video did, as Illuminati's video did, uh, despite the fact that Blair was the one making huge and sweeping allegations about Wonderstruck. Um, so it's been a slant. It's been a sort of slanted situation. And thankfully, it seems like regardless of that, a lot of people are still able to come out and support. And that's a good thing because I think that wonder was mistreated severely in this situation. I like, I think this is a clear, the, the C and D is a clear attempt in my mind, um, at intimidation after, uh, Blair basically used her platform to try and further ruin this guy's life. And as we all know, Blair had already ruined wonders life in a lot of ways, uh, going so far as to, um, uh, uh repossess his vehicle, while all of his career related tools were in there we looked on the last stream at the list of stuff that he lost in that ridiculous repossession situation which was completely uncalled for the repossession was ridiculous it might have been it was clearly legally allowed but that doesn't mean that it was ethically right at all it was a completely ridiculous situation he lost a camera with a full set of lenses he lost a computer uh he lost a um a drone a filming drone like for you know catching video he lost um a like high definition monitors it was terrible um yeah so um yeah so uh unfortunately uh while while blair has gone quiet which is something we're going to be talking about over and over again in this. Um, the fact that Blair only issued one highly corporate, very, very carefully worded statement and has not addressed this outside of her initial video. Her initial video, by the way, which got completely and utterly debunked, uh, not only by Wonder, but especially by The Click. Um, and, uh, but, but... She's been really quiet since then. Um, so it's hard to say exactly when she's going to talk about this or if she will again. Um, but her audience is not happy with it. I wanted to give us a quick update. Just just so we can stop in real quick. I, uh, we've checked in on her numbers. And I want to tell you, 
the loss has continued, okay? Pretty significantly. Uh, since the last time we checked, negative down 120,000 subscribers, okay? So she has now dipped down below, uh, what's the full subscriber count? Yeah, uh, you can actually see, you can actually follow from the last time we covered it that she was up above 1.5 million. She has now dropped down to 1.48 million. Um, so the last time we talked about it, she was still over the 1.5 million and she's dipped down even further since then. It's been a steady loss over the last 30 days. Um, it's pretty severe. You can actually see it right here. Look at that. There's the downturn on the graph. Bam. Looks like um, month to date, month of May. Over the course of the month of May, she lost uh, 170,000 subscribers just over the course of May. And she'd already started to bleed them at the beginning of May. Her views are also uh, insanely low. Yeah, her. take a look at this real quick. Here's the monthly gained video views. Her gain went from gaining 9 million views to gaining 2.8 million views. 9 million. So in the months leading up to this, the numbers were 7.8 million, 9.2 million, 6.7 million, 8.9 million, 9.7 million. And this last month, May, the month of May, 2.8. That is a severe dip, okay? It's... It's hit her channel really, really hard. So she's in a weird spot. Uh, Illuminati finds herself in a spot where either she has to acknowledge that she fucked up to her audience, which maybe some of them will then for forgive her and she'll be able to continue, or she's going to continue attracting the ire of her audience and losing people. Um, unfortunately, from what we've seen in this circumstance, Illuminati does not seem like the type of person who is particularly likely um, to, uh, <laughs> who's particularly likely to back down um, at all, uh, ever, or apologize meaningfully for anything ever, unfortunately, from what we can see. Uh, un so I do think that it's very wise that Wonderstruck is preparing for legal action because I have a feeling that that is going to be Illuminati's next action. Uh, I think that Illuminati is probably going to attempt to bring legal action against Wonder. Um, and potentially, as we are going to discuss a bit later, against one other member of the team. I stated this before, but I'll restate it here for the value of people who are catching it today. I do not believe that Illuminati is going to take le any meaningful legal action uh, in my, this is my personal theory, uh, against the click. And the reason for that is that the click doesn't live in the United States. And secondly, the click absolutely obliterated her claims. But see, for Blair, it was an easy get because Blair called a bluff. Uh, Blair knew that she would not face any meaningful legal repercussions because the click doesn't live in the United States. And it's very, very unlikely um, uh, uh, that, that someone is going to wage a lawsuit, a YouTuber especially, is going to wage an, a lawsuit across the Atlantic. It, it does happen, but usually only when the damages reach an amount that justifies that amount of labor and that amount of cross-country dialogue and expense. Um, because of the difference in country, that basically means that she was doing a bluff call there because I don't think that the click is going to, is going to sue her for the things that she said, even though they were egregious, even though the things that she said about the click were not only false, but, uh, I would argue slanderous. Um, I mean, she claimed that he was creating a, he was facilitating an environment for pedophiles. That's a very severe allegation. So unfortunately, she was able to make a shocking video with claims that are unlikely to have legal repercussions. However, that is not the case, of course, for Wonder. And it's not the case for One Topic. And it's not the case for Oz Media. Oh, is one topic out of the U.S.? Sorry, uh, I, for some reason I thought uh, one topic was was in the U.S., but I could be wrong. Maybe he's in Canada. 
Um, OT is Canadian. Okay, thank you for that correction. I made a small error there. Thank you. Appreciate that. OT is Canadian. Okay, yeah. Well, speaking of OT, that is exactly who we are going to be talking about next. Because the next part of this drama is that one topic made a video responding to all of this. So one topics video released just a couple of days ago on the 2nd of June. So it's been out for a couple of days, but not all that many. And we're going to watch this video together and we're going to talk about it. Um, because it is extremely relevant to everything that we talked about, uh, prior. Um, I know that actually, I didn't surprise this, but, um, I didn't expect this. What the hell? My brain. I have been stumbling over my words today. I'm so sorry. Um, I did not expect this, but, uh, but a lot of people in my audience are fans of one topic and that's super super cool so if you're a fan of demon mama and a fan of one topic you're awesome uh share my love to one topic because he seems like a genuinely cool guy okay uh let's jump into this video this is a video by one topic which is called we need to talk about sad milk and illuminati this is the video right here i am going to be posting the link in the chat for anybody who wants to check it out on their own. We're going to be reacting right now. Let's do it. Apparently, this is a googly eyes on the mic kind of moment. Would a microphone have its eyes on like this or like this? Yeah, okay. There we go. I'm just going to be riffing off the cuff for a while, so don't expect some big receipt drop. It's just going to be... I got to say, this guy has an absolutely killer radio voice. I, I respect that a lot, you know? Uh, being able to have, like, a good voice for delivery on the internet is hard. I don't even, like, I do this for a living, and I get a lot of viewers these days, which makes me very happy, but I feel like my voice isn't even nearly as good as these guys. Like, both the click and one topic, they've got, like, a, like a solid practice voice. Maybe I need to, my voice always feels a little too strained. I gotta, like, I don't know, I gotta, like, do more exercises or something. Anyway, let's continue. That's aside from the point. Me talking things out. I've got some notes to follow generally, and I'll try to do that so that I don't get disorganized. When I posted on Twitter that I didn't really want to rehash a bunch of old stuff from a group project, but just wanted to explain that work functionally broke down and didn't pan out, that is how I felt. And I still maintain an entire lack of interest in pointing fingers over petty things. But not speaking about at least some of what has now been brought up has left a vacuum that can be filled with doubt towards a friend of mine and myself. And without ambiguity, I wanted to address the parts that I was present for that I feel were misrepresented and lied about. Just to clear the air on that side, since I feel at least a little bit like some words were put in my mouth. By the way, if you're here only looking for drama, get out of here. This isn't for you. I really just want to address my community. It's for you. If you're watching mine and you're only here for drama, well, I guess it is a drama mama. So, yeah. Yeah. That's just how it works. And I, I don't know. Is that, is that what it is? I'm, am I being called out right now? Because, like, at the same time, I'm also actually laying out all of the stuff and I did put in a lot of effort in correcting the record. But that is ultimately drama. And if you're clicking on the video to find out the truth about the drama, I kind of feel like you're there for drama no matter what. I feel like you should just own it. I feel like owning that it's drama is better. Is more Chad. Anyway, let's continue. Community and by extension, clicks community. Those who are there for this or have seen the fallout since. If you're new here, hi. I'm one topic. I'm going to be breaking this up into a few sections. Uh, here are the highlights. <laughs> I've largely not wanted to talk about things the last few years because I've been ready to move on. And I was, frankly, just tired of being bullied. A lot of you know that I pretty openly wear my heart on my sleeve. <laughs> I mean, I sobbed kind of openly when we were playing The Last of Us. <laughs> oh, a bunny. Hey, little guy. He's really... <laughs> 
I cared deeply for my friends and the community, and showing that vulnerability to bullying on the internet wasn't really of interest to me, as I know what kind of audience may follow that, and what that can result in for those who currently enjoy the positivity of our comment section and spaces. I've already seen some of that come along after her video dropped. I don't really want to be the focus here on this channel, or in general. <laughs> I've been more interested in making the focus the stories or the memes that I share, and then the moments that I relate to them, rather than sharing my life in full or being some celebrity figure. I'm a very average person who doesn't enjoy the attention, and really doesn't enjoy this situation. So this isn't going to be some flashy video, it's just low-key, and when it's done, I hope we don't have to revisit things. Before jumping in, I just want to say this somewhere near the front. The way that I've seen some people address this situation is unacceptable. To use this as an excuse to bash someone's appearance or gender is something that I will not support in this community. I don't condone going out and harassing any creator involved. To briefly recap the situation, if it's- As you guys all know, we have only really two rules, two hard rules in this community. The first one is do not die. That is the, the, the iron rule of Demon Mama's chat. Do not die. And the second one is, imps always raid with love, and only raid with love. That is our our main community rule. We don't do the harassment crap. We don't do the dogpiling crap. Um, and I think that it's possible to talk about serious issues and even to call people out without being harassing, without being nasty, without being toxic. So, yeah. I agree with him making that clear. I think that's a good thing to do. It's needed. I was in a fun group project called Sad Milk, which I was pretty proud of, and I shouted it out constantly in videos and streams and other projects. Tons of positive aspects initially, but the value of those aspects ended up watered down over time, and my friends and I left the project when the good no longer outweighed the bad. Anyways, Illuminati has dropped a video about it, uh, one that at the time of recording this is still up and it should be taken down. Take it for what you will. True! It absolutely, the the opening with a word of truth. Illuminati's video, which was uh, narcissistically titled uh, Illuminati Exposed, uh, should absolutely be taken down. It is a travesty that that has been up. And to be honest, it doesn't surprise me uh, that the fact that it's still up has made her own community turn against her. It is one of the most manipulative and pathetic videos I've ever seen. You guys know we watched it here live. You heard my commentary on it. It was such a manipulative video. I, I have watched a ton of Illuminati videos in the past. I liked Illuminati's videos. We've reacted to Illuminati's videos on this channel I chose to, to share them with you all in the past. Now, it's been a while since we've done an Illuminati video, but I like her videos a lot. And when I watched that video by myself before we even, before I even was thinking about reacting to this drama, I read like alarm bells were going off in my head because I was like, what the hell is this? This is some manipulative stuff going on. It's wild. Absolutely wild. Let's continue. But a lot was framed incorrectly or was outright false. It did not properly outline what the members of the group accomplished in terms of work, and the vague accusations that payments weren't made and were still an issue right to the end of the project is also just odd. <laughs> a lot has been said about it already in Clicks and Wonders videos. I agree with their recounting as I remember it the same way. From my recollection, after things started to get more serious and we had... So there you have it. A formal... Uh, endorsement from a third member. The first member to leave the project, by the way, um, one topic left because he was the one who got yelled at. Um, uh, 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 according to every other member of the group and by Blair's own admission, she shouted at one topic uh, and that led to one topic no longer wanting to be a part of the group anymore because it had gotten too toxic. Um, and he agrees and is willing to say, yes, what, uh, click and wonder their recounting of events that I was present for are correct. That is now every former member of the group, except for, I believe one named Salty, 
um, every other member has agreed with their recounting of events, which they were all present for. That is an overwhelming amount of people all agreeing that Blair is not telling the truth here. Few recordings, it became pretty clear early on that a couple members couldn't really afford the cost of a fun side project, and we had conversations as a group about how to solve for that because we didn't want to exclude our friends. One solution discussed, for example, was the rest of the group taking on those costs. For example, when we found out that one of the group members couldn't get the 100k plaque because they couldn't afford the cost of it, we discussed pitching in together with our earnings to get it for them. It wasn't which is a really cool and reasonable thing to do. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, there is like shipping costs that you have to pay for your YouTube plaque, uh, but you don't actually have to pay for the plaque itself unless you want duplicates because you're a part of a team project, and then you do have to pay, pay for them. What they're saying here, what he's saying here is that they decided to sort of as a group, sh uh, you know, take on some of the costs because remember, as we know, some of the members of this group did not have big YouTube channels themselves. Wonder is a perfect example of this. Wonder was a 19 year old kid at the time and did not have a big YouTube channel. It's very reasonable to think that he could not have paid for an, for the cost of a YouTube plaque out of his own pocket for a project that he helped build. So it's a very reasonable and very chill thing to do to basically be like, guys, the more famous members of the group, uh, let's let's pitch in to make sure that everybody who contributed to this project is able to get their copy of the YouTube play button. Seems reasonable and chill. Some debt that they'd owe, but just something that we could do for them so that we could all celebrate together. I mentioned this just to demonstrate that when issues arose, we talked them out as a group to find a solution and then solved for it. So I'm unsure what the larger conversation around payments or payment issues is, as I'm unaware of it. And it wasn't a central theme to why things broke down. Honestly, seeing things unfold this way has been pretty tough. I've taken a break for a hot minute from longer videos because of it. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit rusty sitting here trying to record this. I've been gone for a bit over a month now, it looks like, right after having just taken a break from my health. I've also seen there's just some expectation that I should drop this big expose that I have had no interest in. I haven't spent the last month curating content for a video to play into drama. I've spent that time with friends who were involved, collecting our thoughts and checking in on one another. After everything that I've read this last month about this situation and after, I at least want to address what I was present for. I'm not going to talk about everything that went on. It's either unimportant at this moment or puts other creators at risk of being targeted. It made me uncomfortable to hear words or intentions put in my mouth regarding the group call whose framing in the video does not comport with reality. The retelling of how our group conversation went and using it as a way to frame the situation as click not actioning soon enough or responding timely is simply a lie. By the time we got into our one-on-one -on -one call and even the group call, it had already been taken care of. The person who had been inappropriate was banned from his Discord. I was spending time with Human One before she had to be ready for work when I got the DMs. So I went over to my mic to try to figure out what was going on. The one-on-one -on -one call was more to check in on, do you think he would support this person's behavior? And I said, no, <laughs> but that we should really be talking to him directly about this. Illuminati sounded pretty upset during our one-on-one -on -one call and I wanted to be there for my friend, but I know without a doubt that Click would not support that person's behavior. Click, who is someone I spend an inordinate amount of time with, and I thought the best way to clear this up would be to just talk to him. It felt weird that we hadn't yet. We all got into a group call and confirmed everything had been taken care of prior to the call. The person Which keep in mind, once again, just as a refresher, the Click proved all of this. The Click had hard evidence that proves that that, that fact that Illuminati was just lying. Uh, she completely and utterly lied, just completely fabricated a narrative. The, the story was not at all like she said it was. She knowingly lied, uh, and he presented evidence that she knowingly lied. Um, so, yeah had been banned and no of course he doesn't condone their behavior and if he had been awake for it he would have jumped on it immediately and that he'll talk to his mods about it directly and so on and so forth 
I felt like I was more emotional support rather than mediating the chat, so I didn't have that much involvement in the conversation. I actually just sat there and listened for most of it. The call ended up going on for so long that I was really late for my scheduled stream and my mods were waiting on me, which I'd mentioned. At that point, I'd already opened up Microsoft Flight Simulator so I could get it ready for stream, which was noticed during the call and mentioned because this Delance says Oz Media and OT told Tipster live on the air that the Sad Milk Deathstroke video with even more receipts is going to be done by Oz since she broke him, his spirit, and his heart. We will be covering that. You know it. If that video does end up being created, we will be covering that. So keep your eyes peeled here on the Demon Mama channel. Press that subscribe button. As you know, my coverage so far has been... Not to be, not to toot my horn, but my coverage of this incident so far has been very thorough. We will be covering that when that video comes out. If that video comes out. I, I can't speak, you know, to somebody else's intentions, but I assume that they're telling the truth when they said that to Tipster. Gord has zero chill. <laughs> and every time you open up a game, it'll change your status to whatever the game is that you have open, so... That was seen. <laughs> Near the end of the call, Illuminati stated that she wanted me to see the screenshots to fully understand the gravity of the situation. And I conveyed that since it was already shared between the two of them during the call and the person was banned and how Click was going to talk to his mods after this conversation and with how everything was already discussed and solved that I didn't need to see them. And I had no interest in them. I really didn't want to see the messages of a banned Discord person. <laughs> a folder of them was dropped into the chat and I was told it was important to look at them. So wanting to keep the waters calm, I opened the folder and I looked at one of the screenshots and then I reiterated in written text what I'd already conveyed, which was that I had no interest in having access to the screenshots. The conversation felt weird at the time. And looking back, it's weird how it was reframed for the purpose of- So now we have unequivocal confirmation that the perhaps final remaining aspect of Illuminati's narrative was completely and utterly manipulated and twisted. That she reframed the words that one topic brought forward uh, just to suit her own narrative. Not that he was so scared of how horrible the things were in there, but rather that he felt that it was over with and he didn't need to have access to a bunch of crap, to a bunch of, you know, icky messages that had already been sorted. Just how much of a repudiation of Illuminati's messaging can this be? And this is the thing. This is the thing that stands out and should stand out to every single person who is engaging with this drama at all. Illuminati's willingness to manipulate every single piece of the narrative to, to better suit her version of events should be a red flag for everything that she does. You cannot trust Illuminati to tell the truth. This is not just a single lie. It's not just a mistake. It is a complete rewriting and bending of a narrative of every single aspect she could get her hands on. She bent it to make her look good and to make everyone else look bad. To build a narrative of false, of completely falsified allegations against somebody who didn't do anything wrong. She was, remember, let's keep this in context, she was accusing the clique of harboring a discord for pedophiles. That was the accusation. Just insanity. And an unbelievable level of dishonesty that truly does undermine the value of not just her current work, but her former work as well. Imagine being a debunker channel, a channel that goes and exposes corporate manipulation, exposes liars, and now it's on the record that you fucking twisted the narrative to this degree. Just, it completely, it, it I, I, I said this before, but, but, but it really does do damage because it calls into question all of her former allegations against other things. It, this hurts the victims of the places that she's covered, those cults, those uh, uh, multi-level marketing schemes, those corporations, her videos now have been undermined. Her channel is not small. 
Her videos get a lot of views, and this calls into question the, ver the, the veracity of her claims. It's such a, such a terrible event. So terrible. That video, but from my memory, the call was actually pretty positive. Checking in on an issue that was seen on Discord, making sure click was okay, and I had the impression we were all friends by the end of it. I don't want to rehash the screenshot everyone has. Precisely. JFK Jr. says, every single cult and MLM can just say, oh look, she's a manipulator to their victims, which gives them power. This is why, if you're going to do exposés on stuff, if you're going to take the time to do that, you have to have your receipts in order and you have to not engage in this type of disgusting manipulation yourself it really does do damage scene but i actually dm'd click immediately after the call and this was our conversation regarding it how dare you diss my kissy noises <laughs> yeah thanks for that dude <laughs> lol lol i'm sorry all of that got dumped on you at once dude i agree lumi can talk to you directly about this obviously and she woke me up a while ago with a lot of concerns so i was just sticking around to make sure that she didn't take things to the worst conclusion let me know if you feel up yeah. to streaming or anything today <laughs> it's all good i'm not surprised to be honest and it isn't a shock happy to have you there we'll see i was planning on streaming like an hour ago but if this doesn't drain me too much i'm down can't promise though it was draining to me i didn't know about this stuff outside of what you told me a few weeks ago and i was sleeping lol lol <laughs> this was me joking about having been asleep at the time this is in reference to the call because we all knew click had been asleep and same, I push back my stream, haha. -ha. I'll start with Fall Guys and you can keep me posted. Nice. Click had already solved an issue with his mods a few weeks before and that was brought up during the call and he explained it was handled, but that wasn't the focus of the call. Before moving forwards, I know that my Discord is much smaller, but I'm still confused about the phrasing of who owned whose mods and claiming Click's mods didn't do anything to ban a member if they both shared mods because then the mods who did do the ban were also his mods, even if they're moderating elsewhere because they're also moderating his Discord. <laughs> Anyways. I didn't call a specific meeting. Click did express the importance of having one to clear the air about what we all found stressful and how to solve for it, something he and I had talked about, but we didn't call a meeting. He and I had actually scheduled time off for us to catch up on our workload and just spend time away from the project, and when we were told the meeting was to take place, it was during that time off that we had scheduled, time we needed to step away for a breather. I don't need to rehash the full meeting. I wasn't there for as long as the others, and what was said to me was quoted more accurately in Wonder's video. How the rest of the meeting went was recounted to me afterwards and later corroborated by the others who stayed. This was detailed in Click's Twitter thread. It became clear during the meeting that me simply staying involved in the project was unhealthy for me, but also that my participation was seen as antagonistic. I don't know what she needed, but whatever it was, whatever kind of help it was, it wasn't what a friend could give. And I, I don't think I was one at that point. And that sucked. I hadn't actually seen my departing message since making it. I wrote this and then left the server. Since it's been in others' videos, I'm just gonna read it out. Hey fam, I've had a quick chat with Oz, but I want to share with you the details. I've decided to step away from Sad Milk. Sad Milk is an excellent project. One. So now we finally get to see his actual message, which was conveniently not displayed in the past that I've loved participating in and making friends through. I genuinely care for each of you and it's hard to recognize when things are fundamentally not working despite trying to push through it. I have done my best to adapt myself, my voice, my presence, and my humor around what all of you will find works in a video. And I've done my absolute best to be the voice of reason when big things are changing or we need someone to prepare bad news, but the level of involvement I've had is not sustainable and progressing further into it this way is continuing to be unhealthy for me, both publicly and privately. Currently, I will be stepping away from Sad Milk. I don't have any public messaging planned as any change, such as someone leaving, can make people feel like a project is on rocky footing, and I don't want my personal exit to be the cause of yet more drama. I love you all, and I need to do this for my sake. I love what we've done so far, and I know you can take this further. OT. What a kind exiting message for for when you have a legitimate reason to feel extremely hurt because somebody who you were working on a project with yelled at you
What a what an unbelievably mature and chill message to send. Just being like, guys, I don't think I can do this anymore. Uh, you all are great. I don't want anything bad to happen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and undermine this project at all. In fact, I'll do everything I can to support it, but I gotta go. Another yeah, another another example of her just twisting it, like her trying to build the narrative that there that everybody else except for her was was like a lazy piece of shit who didn't care about the project is just she did all of these people so dirty and now we have the evidence we now you know weeks after this ch shitty hit piece this manipulative shit came out we now see what actually happened and it was just a bunch of people being fucking normal and chill and her taking that in the most personal way personal way possible and then further on trying to frame them as like lazy losers when all they did was like express their own needs That's... <laughs> i've also asked click who left a day or so after i did to please read his departing message for us god my nose is stuffy today but i'm gonna read this anyway because <laughs> dude you're so <laughs> sick gonna... <laughs> okay let me let me get through this oh my god hey uh, friends i'm a slime all over y'all i have taken this last week to think things through thoroughly and realize during the past time and especially during the monday meeting that a lot of priorities and ideas for sad milk have shifted it is always fun to see a product move forward and not to interrupt him but I just want to recall that from the very beginning of this, every single former member of, including Blair, although she stated it in a different way, agreed that the, the, the heart of the project completely changed. At the very beginning, Wonder and Click both stated that Sad Milk had in, was intended to be a fun project, but that increasingly demanded more and more of their time. That even though it was explicitly designed to be a fun project to build friendships, and they were happy that it had succeeded in some ways, that it became expensive, that it started to cost more of their time and their money, and that they didn't like that. In Blair's version, she framed this as them not taking it seriously and wanting to put all the work on her, but, as it turns out, it seems like she was the one driving the channel to be changed from a fun project into a moneymaker. And this just further uh, supports that. With the reading of his original message to the chat saying outright at the very beginning, we feel, I, I feel like this has changed. That just supports more and more what has been said by every former member. That... The project was being driven in a direction that nobody else involved with it wanted to do. So your friends be invested and creative. However, Galactic Prakyon says, I was a former Sad Milk fan. You could tell that things had changed. That can seriously happen if a project goes from being a fun side, you know, hobby project into a moneymaker. Those are very different undertakings. However, I also feel like I was in the minority in the meeting, and that is perfectly okay. Everyone doesn't have to agree on everything or do the same things. With all these <clears throat> God, You're with dying all these changes, right now. <laughs> I am very dying. <laughs> with all these changes, Sad Milk is heading in a direction that I simply cannot follow at this time. You may have noticed on my other platforms that I have decreased my width and activity in many places, such as the podcast, my ASMR channel, I stream less, etc. I realized that my life was getting incredibly isolated where I sometimes didn't see another human for three days in a row and didn't leave the house. <sighs> Being the extrovert I am, this has started to affect my mental health negatively, and I need to drop some things to make life work. Hence, I can't ride with you on the current path Sad Milk is on. I wish the best for the channel, and it has been a blast to do something like this with like-minded people. I do still consider- You guys know, on this channel, I have talked about the, the, the YouTube grind a lot, and how much um, YouTube will literally eat your entire life if you let it. If you, if you don't- actively choose to step away if you don't act, it will literally consume your entire existence and you won't even get all that much for it that's the crazy thing uh youtube is designed to continually demand more and more content it is a eternal content machine it's 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 good to hear like another creator realize that and take the steps necessary to protect their own life balance because God knows it's extremely easy to lose yourself in this type of work. 
uh, everybody thinks of YouTube as the fun videos that they watch at home, but making fun videos for you to watch at home is a very, very different experience than watching fun videos at home. Um, yeah. Anyway. For everyone here close friends and I look forward to talking with you guys in DMs or other servers. I don't plan on having a public announcement made. Just let it fade out smoothly with a new style of content that might actually happen naturally. Love you all deeply and thank you for letting me partake in this project. Woo! Thanks for recording it uh. even though you're really sick. <laughs> oh, no worries, no worries. My voice is still buttery smooth, but instead of butter, it's slime. Oh, oh yeah. God, stop. All right. All right, that's it. We're done. <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm gonna stop recording. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, click. <laughs> After that, we talked about how we could quietly tell our moderators that we had left the group without causing a stir. To not cause a mess, but to like look out for specific or targeted messages in chat or in discords and redirect or delete as needed. We had no intention of going after anyone or telling a story about why we left. We wanted what was best for our friends. Even if that meant we- Which, by the way, they didn't. That's the thing that stands out in all of this. None of the former members came, like, d made a big deal about it. They all just sort of quietly exited the project and moved on with their lives until they realized that there was a bunch of bullshit coming out about them being spread all over the place that their friends were were uh their friends were coming to them and going hey I heard this horrible shit about you and they were like what the fuck is going on so. All of these people, they did they did step away from the project and move on with their lives. It was Blair who didn't do that. It was Blair who was chasing after them, and as we now know and have had confirmation of, literally using sock puppet accounts to targetedly spread misinformation about them. That's right. In Click's video, we had confirmation that Blair, from two separate sources, that Blair was using fake accounts to spam uh, 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 unsavory information about all of these creators, uh, but specifically Click, mostly Click. It was mostly targeted at Click, um, but not entirely. It was mostly targeted at Click. Um, would, would literally go and spam it at other content creators trying to to ensure that other youtubers didn't associate with click didn't associate with wonder didn't associate with one topic truly deranged and obsessive crap couldn't move forwards with them on one work project illuminati is correct that she did not speak to me after the meeting not since 2020. Click was right that we didn't want to weigh in on things at the time because speaking towards any of this was clearly seen as antagonistic or threatening and we just wanted to give everyone the space to move on. But regardless of what we did or didn't do, rumors continued to spin. And it was so disappointing, especially when some of the rumors were furthered on Reddit from Illuminati's main account. Not only were these posts inaccurate, but they showed a dishonest oversimplification of the work we had done on this project. <laughs> I took a mental health break from my server with everything going on. I've tried not to share a lot of personal details about myself when making my channel, intentionally so, because I want the focus to be more on the stories or memes from the community that knows what it feels like to not like yourself and to want to improve. And something I found when I started my YouTube channel is I started to like myself more. There's still down days and bad days, but they were a lot more manageable when being able to focus on work I believed in and supporting a community I really value. Struggling with mental health was- Damn. Relatable. I'll, I'll add on to this here to say, um, I'm a fairly open person. Like, I, I am probably different in one topic in that way, in that I talk pretty openly about certain aspects of my private life. Um, and even still, even though that's like important to me to be able to tell some of my stories, like you guys know, I've been very open about the fact that I grew up in a cult and how much pain that's caused me over the years. I've been very open about certain things. Um, and uh, and even even with that, even with me being a more open person in that way, I constantly have um this anxiety about never being able to escape the gaze of the internet 
um, it's a it's something that's in my mind constantly. I will be sitting on the couch in my house playing a video game, and I will be thinking, I bet there are people who are mad at me that I haven't uploaded a video or that I haven't posted on social media. Um, I will be out in the middle of the woods uh, camping next to, a, next to a fire, chopping wood, whatever, and I'll be going, I hope that there are not people out there, and I know that there probably are, but I hope there are not people out there who are mad that I'm not creating right now. And also what's even worse sometimes than that is that I know some, I, I will constantly think about how YouTube will be mad at me for that sort of thing. It's, I don't think there's a single content creator who doesn't uh, uh, experience that what, what one topic is talking about here. This like, even like this fear of how much it encroaches into your personal life. The, um, and like, this is me talking about the most mundane aspects, okay? Like, this is not to mention uh, when, you know, a year and a half ago, when I had a bunch of freak stalkers uh, following me and trying to find my address, when I had a bunch of freak ass stalkers digging into my past life, trying to find out where I went to high school. Um, like, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot. It's, it's like, it's not, there's no, there, it's not okay, but every single YouTuber who has any, even a drop of success has to deal with this shit. Like, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to add my own personal commentary as somebody who approaches content very differently than uh, one topic does. You know, I... Uh, I, I, I do tend to talk about my personal life experiences a lot and, uh, and you know, yeah, anyway. Something I related to strongly with other members of the group and we talked pretty openly about it. Our fears, our insecurities. One thing I never thought would be released was personal details about a group member's mental health or their struggles. I figured those kind of personal details would be off limits and no way would be used as a weapon. We were <laughs> surprised by the Reddit posts. Certainly. The details from the troll account were so specific. But behind the scenes, I was constantly reminding people not to jump to conclusions about this, that even though the timing was strange and the details were so specific, we should not be paranoid about who it originated from. <laughs> I I don't have a lot of interest in going over the Doobie Schmertz accounts themselves in detail, either the one on Reddit or the ones on Twitter or however many else, however many other alt accounts. I worked with Click when it happened to contact the creators and friends that were tagged, and I know he apologized for his words that he said when he was 15 and Swedish <laughs> and learning English as a second language. However, the account targeted for those who are unaware or who may have missed out on uh, on the term the Doobie Schmertz account. Doobie Schmertz was a very specific account that was incredibly active on Reddit uh, and Twitter that I know of, and also YouTube. This was a, a seemingly random account that it was later shown that this account actually belonged to Blair of Illuminati, AKA the same person as Illuminati. Um, this account belonged to Blair and she was using it to repeatedly spread misinformation and say terrible, terrible things about uh, these content creators. Remember that I mentioned just a few minutes ago that like uh, there were alt accounts that would specifically go to other YouTubers and try to make these creators look bad to those YouTubers? That was one of the accounts. The Doobie Schmertz account would take videos that made them look bad or, uh, or uh, narratives that made them look bad or screenshot posts, write these huge threads and they would tag in tons of other creators in the hope of damaging the career as uh, prospects of all of these other people. And like I said, it was mostly fixated on click, but not entirely. It's very, very messed up. Yeah. 
Metroid Gauntlet says, if it's any consolation, I love how good your content is, especially when you take your time and actually live your life. Much love. Love you lots, Mama. Oh, thank you so much. That really does mean the world to me. Uh, I have an awesome community. I should state that clearly. Um, my community is like, I'm so thankful for my fucking imps. You guys are amazing. And you're literally one of the chillest communities on the internet. You're literally famous with other content creators for being awesome and for being supportive. Like people talk about the imps independent of me. That's really cool. Um, and I love that. What I was talking about is just like, like I said, I don't, I don't even think, I don't think anybody, no matter how awesome their community is, can escape that effect when the, the camera literally, but like when the eyes of the public are on you so frequently, uh, all the time. And there's so many expectations from so many people. It's a hard thing to deal with is all that I was trying to say. Cause you guys really are amazing. And I love my community and that's why part of the reason I'm so passionate about this work is because I love making you guys laugh. I love making you guys have a good time. I love making sure that I can share what I learn and experience with all of you. That means the world to me. So, yeah. Forgetted his apology, said it was bad, and continued on to ping others. It became clear the harassment was not intended to stop. There were specific portions of the posts on Reddit from the troll account that stood out to me, an intentional phrasing to drive a wedge between Click and I. And one topic is friends with someone while pretending to be wholesome and good. I think one topic is a liar and a sham and has been pandering to our community. If he stays friends with someone like this, he is using us for money. It was such specific phrasing written by Blair, written by Blair on an alt account. And sounded so familiar. I just, I didn't want to believe it. I'm still having a hard time wrapping my mind around this. We had been transparent about focusing on streaming to help bring in side income because even though a side project like Sad Milk was affordable and even profitable in the latter months, in order to do this long term, we- But don't let it get to your head. Don't fucking, don't, don't, just take, take your praise with, 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 don't get, don't get hubris, okay? Because pride will come before the fall, nuts needed to ensure we were bringing in more income in addition to having fun with the community. And I talked about how making content for the Patreon was taking a lot of time, but how I really enjoyed my circle over there. And the comment, I know I'm going to be leaving and stop supporting him on Patreon, sounded so... I just, I, I couldn't believe that this was the person who would say that. Salty. Um, yes. Did you leave Sad Milk because we were paying you better on the podcast? So Salty is the member that we have heard the least from. This is the member who has largely remained out of it. But as you can see, Salty is making some statements now. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Wait, I was, I was getting paid? Wait, shut up, Salty. <laughs> a couple of months later, I found out personal and private details about members of the group who left were being spread around maliciously when I was DM'd by a concerned community member who had been talked to. A community member who still messages me today with concerns about all of this. The message was concerning offline information that had not been shared outside of private work conversations, private one-on-one -on -one conversations, or had not been shared at all mixed in with fabrications. It later became clear who that information had originated from. And this was later independently corroborated by a creator who had come forward to me who had witnessed this. Over the last month, I've seen a lot. This is another thing that I talked about in the very first video, which is that if somebody is lying about you, if somebody is harming your reputation on the internet, it can be extremely, extremely hard to prove that that's true. And a lot of people will just sort of assume that you're not, that you're like exaggerating or not telling the truth. All of these guys, uh, one topic, click, wonder, all of them were in agreement and saying, guys, we've had tons of people come to us with really weird information that they shouldn't even know unless someone who was in our private conversations with us was spreading. And even still, even with three of the members all saying that, 
a lot of people were still like, I don't know, because it's really hard to prove that type of shit. But on the flip side, it can severely damage your career, especially in reputation-based careers. Like it or not, being a YouTuber is a reputation-based career. I know this firsthand. I have also been someone who has experienced severe uh, attempts to damage my reputation, successful attempts at times, based off of false information that has been spread about me. Um, it's really difficult to communicate that and to prove that to other people, and it can be almost impossible to prove that to the community or the public at large. So I really sympathize with their frustration in having to deal with this type of nightmare situation where somebody is just spreading misinformation and lies about you in the most malicious way possible. And there's no way that you can prove it until way later. These guys had to deal with this shit for years. They were working on their channels, dealing with random people getting false information about them, and they weren't able to even get the evidence together for a very long time because it's really hard to get that evidence sometimes. Sometimes you have to go and reach out to random people that you see spreading something and go, hey, where the hell did you hear that? Can you tell me who told you that? Because here's the reason why. They might not even tell you. They might never say who was telling them that. It's a, I, com I really sympathize with that frustration. A lot of things that were said about me and about us, <laughs> maybe too much. I do believe that a person should be allowed some space and privacy to vent frustrations or to feel angry about friends or colleagues with people they trust. And I'm not upset about that. I don't care that mean words were said about me or that mean words will still be said about me. What I do care about is how lies were weaponized against myself and my friends. There is a distinct difference between privately venting and purposefully spreading of harmful lies. I had Yes, there is. There absolutely is. There is a big difference between set talking to, to one or two personal friends about your frustrations with somebody else. Um to the degree uh, that, like, to the degree that, like, I, you know what? Sometimes when you're ranting with your friends, you you don't perfectly recount every situation. You sometimes will be talking to your best friend, and you'll be like, this motherfucker was like, oh, I didn't do the dishes. Duh, duh, duh. And that might not be 100% accurate, but you're talking to your best friend. Your best friend isn't going to go spread that to 100 other people. They're just there to help you calm down. And there's a huge difference between th that sort of experience, like he said, venting to a friend and going to every person you know and going, did you hear that uh, this person was doing this thing? Did you hear that here's my manipulative narrative? Take my narrative. Oh, uh, I was just venting. It's fucking, this, there's a complete difference between those things. He's spot on here. One topic is spot on here to tell my family that they couldn't engage with my content out of concern that they might say something that would get them targeted too. I had to worry not just about who I made friends with, but who by being friends with me, I put at risk. Dealing with all of this is certainly stressful and you start to question yourself and doubt yourself. I had no idea that that Sorry, was I by something? design. I feel risk. I made friends might say something that would get them targeted too. I had to worry not just about who I made friends with, but who by being friends with me, I- <laughs> Guys, hold on. I see the eyeballs. I know, <laughs> obviously, I, know, I can see them. I've been watching the whole time. Do you really think I missed that? I'm just trying to focus on the content, not the eyeballs. I see the eyeballs, okay? Just so we're clear. Yes, I know. There's 900 eyeballs that weren't there before. I'm, I'm, give me some credit. I'm pretty observant, okay? But at risk, dealing with all of this is certainly stressful and you start to question yourself. <laughs> and doubt yourself. I had no idea that that was by design. I feel very lucky that I've had a good support network around myself the last few years. I've had the same friends who went through that with me. God, yep, that is I'm a, still that is a absolute fucking, oh God, that's a hit in the heart. Uh,
Some people will call this gaslighting. I don't know if we need to even call it gaslighting, but someone in someone systematically and strategically trying to make you doubt yourself and your and your own confidence it is one of the worst and most horrible things you can possibly imagine and it carries on so much longer than the actual incident um yeah that's really bad yeah well here yeah, still here, just sick, not dead. And the same moderators who help keep the community safe. I moderate your Discord, I moderate your Twitch, I moderate your YouTube, I moderate your life. Hey! All right, all right, all right now, monster. Let's, all right. And Human One has been through all of this with me and seen everything. Yep, I'm still here. I've taken a month away from things because I'm also the support network for others and I've been there for them through this most recent rehashing of things. I've seen what they've seen and being there for them was the priority. I still don't, I still don't want to believe all of this is, I still don't want to believe all of this is true. I'm not convinced the person who did this did not intend real world harm to us. The only kind of person who could slander their friends like this is someone who is darkly unremarkable. Blair, I don't know if you've made it this far, but I'm sorry. I truly am. I really wish we could have been the friends you were looking for, but we were still your friends. What you did was unacceptable and goes so far beyond any petty beefs or squabbles or hurt feelings. This wasn't just trying to separate yourself from us like we asked for and worked to do. You acted like this was a war and that you should be recruiting soldiers to come after us. You lied. And I can only think that's because you wanted us gone. Not just off of YouTube. <laughs> you wanted these lies to come into our everyday life offline. You're right. We haven't spoken since the meeting, and I had wondered about that, because now it seems like you had a plan you wanted to implement, and we were your punching bags. And that sucked, man. <sighs> so much. Stop going after people who were your friends. Stop bullying other creators. I used to be really proud of what we worked on, and I've got some good memories of it, with yourself included. These people who were your friends, who had gone to bat for you so many times, and then when they finally couldn't take how you treated them, you immediately turned on them and worked to isolate them from their friends and their communities. People aren't only a sum of their worst qualities, and we aren't only our insecurities or fears. None of us looked at you as only one thing. We were proud to be your friends. And for so long, we gave you everything we were able to. But when we explained our boundaries, it just wasn't good enough. That kind of resentment builds up. It doesn't mean we hated you or that we could never reconnect down the road. But we recognized that it was no longer safe for our well-being to keep working with you. Having a grudge is one thing, but going after everyone is something entirely different. I don't know you, Blair. I don't know you. But I really wish things could have been different. I, I don't know if you have a support network around you to help you through this, but I hope you do. I hope on the other side of this, you just discontinue your harassment of creators you were once associated with. That you stop punching down on smaller creators. I don't have any hope of an honest apology. But you should really take that video down, Blair. I mean, that kind of lays out exactly, I mean, that really was the, the rundown of it, right? Like, he really laid out exactly in one place the summation of all the actions that we've seen. A person who cannot simply live at peace with others, cannot simply part ways, cannot simply let a project end, and instead has to 
pursue all of these people and some kind of punishment. You guys remember when we were watching Wonder's video and it just, and I kept bringing up that like it felt like she was trying to uh, punish him specifically for not wanting to like, not wanting to be a part of the project anymore. That it was all about punishment. That like all the way down to the repossession, to the calls to the police about mental health, that it all felt like punishment for him ever stepping out of line at all. It's such a strange and toxic and demented way to live. And all that we've seen through all of this is that this is a, a behavior that she replicates with every other person. An inability to come to peace with disagreement, an inability to come to peace with uh, difference, a desire to punish people for not sticking with her through, through everything and anything. It is really messed up. And it's... Uh, I don't know, that's fucking sad to hear. It's sad and it's horrible. Like, um, like, I don't know, just put yourself in one topic's shoes. Like this guy is like trying to live his life and, and, and nightmare interpersonal drama from three years ago from a project that he left because it already felt like it was getting too toxic. It wasn't like he burned out of the project and said, fuck you. He just said, all right, guys, I, I need a breather. I need to step back from this. And then it kept coming after you. It's like, I don't know. It's like the emotional equivalent of it follows, you know, there's like a ghost that's just chasing you through your life. For what reason? because Blair can't move on. Blair has a successful channel. She just couldn't come to terms with any level of deviance from her emotional view of the world. And it just seems to be continuing to this day. We're talking about it now because even after this video came out, even after this sort of please, none of us hate you. We just want to be done with you and to have you stop lying about us so we can do other things, so we can live a life that's separate from you. Even still, she's still going after the other members, as we are going to see. Let's finish this video. I had to get a coffee and cool down <laughs> all right common questions yeah ads on the video um the others have talked about why algorithm and whatnot but i also haven't uploaded for over a month while talking with the guys and going through all of the details of the situation so hello. based trans rights shirt based a little bit of time to make up for are you pursuing this legally i <sighs> I have spoken to a legal team about this previously, before all of this, and while there are directions we could go in, I just have no interest in pursuing that option at this time. Unless I have to. Like before, I just want to be done with all this. Fundraising! Yes! It's the first of the month. It's Pride Month! And I'm linking the Trevor Project on this video, as I have on many other videos. My target is to complete the goal of raising $100,000 by the end of June. We're getting suspiciously close. Are you still gonna keep making content? <laughs> if the int- Bone says, one topic is ridiculously queer friendly. If you look at his channel, every other video is covering queer subreddits. That is so cool. We're about to talk about that, Hunga Master. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Tension was to make me go away forever. I'm certainly not going to be making it easier to achieve that. I will still be making content. This is my only planned response. I don't really want to cover everything I've been through in all this. It just doesn't feel helpful. I've spent a lot of time speaking to my friends about how I could best support them. And at that time, all they needed was for me to be there for them. Now, with threats of legal action, I wanted my position to be clear. <laughs> I do have a bit of a funny story from this. When talking with Wonder, I heard the words, James down the stairs into the basement. And I say, what? I did no such thing. <laughs> what a time to find out you share a name with a dog. <laughs> out of all of this, at least there's one like fun thing I can finally do. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <sighs> It was still covered up a little bit. Okay. Okay, there. <laughs>
All right. I, I don't have a fun sign off for this video like I do the usual ones, but I <laughs> I do have a stupid video of me and the guys running around throwing snowballs at one another. And I'll blur it out because it's in a neighborhood, but I'll let that play us off here. Wonder, where are your shoes? Wonder, barefoot. Wonder, go inside. Where are you? Where are your shoes? Where are your sh Come inside. Wonderstruck, please don't make me run. There's no one so good. Bro, come back. Wonder. Bold. Oh, God. Okay, are you coming back? I have hypothermia. Come on. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> My only hope. <laughs> the epistle lost me. He is chasing me. I have shoes. No one can stop me now. Oh. Oh, you power-hungry bastard! Uh, Please! We have enough content, you madman! <laughs> oh, no. We seem to be tracking <laughs> a wild Wonderstruck guy. Holy shit, it's gold. Wonder where he is. Oh, also, stay tuned to see if I get sued, I guess. <laughs> What a nice way to end the- wait a minute. The sued part is not the nice way to end the video, but the video of them having fun in the snow. I love the snow, and I love seeing people have fun in the snow. It's good. Having fun in the snow is purely wholesome, okay? Um, snow brings out the best in people. It just does. I don't know what it is. Something about snow just inspires people to be cuddly and cute with one another, and it's nice. I like it. Now, uh, one topic said we're going to find out if I get sued. I don't know. It's hard to say. However, I hope that one topic is genuinely prepared for that possibility. And the reason why is because of what we are about to talk about next. The last bit of this particular drama um, for today. Because obviously... I do believe, from what I have heard, there is a definitive uh, video on this drama coming out from Oz Media, who we are about to look at here. Oz Media, of course, being the closest person to Blair, the last person to part ways with Blair. Uh, Oz Media was, by, uh, by his own admission, involved in in a lot of the uh, smear campaigns against former members, which he regrets. He uh, talked about this on both Twitter, which we looked at, and also talked about it in Wonderstruck's video. Uh, he admitted to participating in these smear campaigns um, because he felt, for a number of reasons, um, and he also expressed extreme regret. Uh, Oz Media has also gone out of the way to try and make peace with the former members, some of whom he did hurt. Um, yeah. She already attempted to sue Tipster and r slash. I didn't know she tried to sue Tipster. I didn't know. I know they had beef, but I did not know that she tried to sue Tipster. Um, that is wild. I, I... If you have a, do you have, does anybody have a link to that claim? Because I had not heard that. If that's true, I have not heard that so far. Big. All right, real quick. Let's dig into this real quick. This happened uh, uh, just 18 hours ago. We received a post from Oz Media. So Illuminati has now officially sent me a cease and desist. The best part is she cites parts of videos which I had no part in making and demands that I make a public apology. I haven't even made a video yet. So that's an interesting one. A cease and desist is one thing. But a demand for public apology is another thing. And again, I am not a lawyer. This is my personal theorizing based on having spent an inordinate amount of time uh, 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 diving into this and trying to understand uh, the approach that Blair has had in this situation. 
but a demand for a public apology alongside a cease and desist seems to me, sorry, two cease and desists sent to separate people seems to me to indicate that Blair is not going to be backing down anytime soon. So I think uh, that as of the state of affairs right now, the people at most risk are Oz Media and, uh, and Wonderstruck. And I have to say um, one thing. I know there's a very low chance that this video will be seen by either Oz Media or Wonderstruck or Click or One Topic. But I have to say, um, Oz Media, if by any chance you get this message, and if there's anybody in my audience um, that watches Oz Media or knows Oz Media and wants to send this clip, Oz Media, when you release, if you release your video, be very, very careful. Provide extremely stringent receipts and make sure that the video is edited to focus around those receipts and around hard evidence. Because from everything that I can see, uh, there is an intent to become litigious with this. And um, I really don't want to see anybody else get hurt from this. I am just a fellow YouTuber who genuinely does not want to see any of these people hurt anymore. I cover a lot of stuff like this. Please be careful. Uh, I, I have reason, at least within my own mind, to believe that Oz Media and Wonderstruck are going to be the focuses of this. And my reasoning for that is that they're the ones that are located in the U.S. I don't believe that... Uh, that uh, Illuminati is going to try and wage a cross-country legal war. That puts her at a disadvantage monetarily. It puts her at a disadvantage legally to try and go after one topic who is Canadian um, and or to go after the click who I think he said he was Swedish. I think he said Swedish. Apologies if I got that wrong. But those of you who are located in the U.S., uh, be careful. Really, really careful. And those of you who are watching... Try to, if you guys are fans, uh, shared fans of these creators, please encourage them to be really careful and take precautions because from everything that I can see, it really does look like the intent is to pursue litigation. Yeah. Sweden, okay, yeah. Yep. Anyway, um, uh, uh, Blair does indeed seem to be on the warpath. And uh, the the public statement that she issued, the fact that she's not talking about it anymore, it, it indicates to me that she's positioning herself to be able to act legally and is hoping to be able to jump on any mistake. And unfortunately, depending on contracts that have been signed, she might be able to do that. Um, so let's do a quick summary uh, so far, a cease and desist has been sent to both Oz Media and Wonderstruck. Uh, uh, one topic has come forward to further stand behind and sign off on the narratives that were presented by the Click, which we have already acknowledged the Click had a particularly rock solid set of receipts um, and Wonder. Um, this is very good for Wonder, uh, for Oz, Wonder, and the Click. Uh, because it now represents a united front from all of the people who dealt with Blair in the past. Basically, the entire project, besides Blair, disagrees with her uh, narrative of events and has been able to provide evidence for it, mainly on the allegations against the Click. Uh, the Click has been essentially entirely vindicated in this in this circumstance. One topic, Wonder, and uh, and the Click himself were all able to provide evidence that the situation did not unfold as Blair did. Now, Wonder, Wonder's situation is a little bit different because Wonder was the only one, not the only one, Wonder and Oz were the only people present for most of what happened to Wonder. Uh, so the Click and One Topic can support each other's narratives with evidence, 
but they can't necessarily support Wonder's uh, narrative with evidence. We're going to have to see what happens with Wonder, and I'm really hoping that Wonder is taking his time, documenting and archiving everything that he has, and will be able to resist whatever Blair has in store for him, because I genuinely think that Blair mistreated Wonder to an unbelievable degree, engaged in financial manipulation that is frankly disgusting, and that should and that Blair needs to be roundly dis, uh, uh, denounced by every creator who cares at all about the wellness of this space. Let me remind you that in this situation, we not only have an example of a creator, Blair Illuminati, going out of her way to damage the reputations and lives to an unbelievably psychotic degree, to an extremely manipulative degree of multiple of her former collaborators who parted on peaceful terms. But we also now have an example of Blair going out of her way to take over the life of an incredibly young and, and highly, um, uh, highly influenceable uh, content creator. She roped Wonder at a very young age when he was a small YouTuber into an unbelievable amount of contracts. And we have every single reason to believe that she might be doing that right now. We don't know if she's planning on doing the same thing to her editors, to her the people who create content for her channel, to her moderators, to members of her community. This behavior needs to be denounced because it makes the entire space work worse. It puts young aspiring uh, YouTube workers in danger of being predated upon by a highly manipulative, highly litigious, highly harmful and cruel individual and that's about all there is to say at this particular moment it is very important in my opinion that uh, every youtuber who is at all connected to this at all denounce this type of behavior uh, to the best of their ability thank you all for watching Press the subscribe button down below if you want to keep up with my content. This is the type of stuff I do. I do deep dives. Uh, I do uh, highly analytical reacts. And, of course, I do lots of funny stuff. This one, not so funny because it's a pretty serious situation. But the rest of my content, very funny. Most of the time, we have a lot of fun on this channel. But, unfortunately, sometimes we got to talk about serious stuff. So smack that subscribe button, ring the bell, and press the like button. Thank you for watching.